Hey guys, welcome to another video. And we broke the Civic again. So it blew a head gasket again. As you guys can see, there's some coolant over here and here. And this coolant reservoir is quite full, which it wasn't. Also, if you look in the radiator, you'll see there's some coolant missing. Now that basically means the head gasket's blown. So what's happening is it's pushing compression into the cooling system and then obviously there is now air in the coolant system. If too much air gets into the cooling system, it'll actually start overheating and your sensor might not be touching coolant, so it won't tell you that it's overheating. So you can still drive it, this car does still start and drive, but, but like I said, it keeps on pushing air into the cooling system and then if you actually go into boost, it starts pushing the coolant out of this overflow bottle. Obviously this is just the overflow, it doesn't seal, so it starts spraying out of here, going everywhere. You can see there's coolant everywhere on this pipe here. Uh, there was a bit more, but I cleaned it up to form some reels. Anyways, we're changing the head gasket again. Now, the reason why I changed the head gasket the first time was because I was waiting on uh, ARP head studs and they just weren't coming in. So I decided instead of letting the car just sit, let's just swap the head gasket, put the stock studs back and see how that works. And it lasted about, let's say, five trips. But I will say I went through the track twice with this car and abused it quite a bit. And it, it held up until I installed the manual boost controller. Now, I'm doing dyno prep on the car, so I was installing it just to make it ready for when the tuner actually tunes it, so we can adjust it. And then, I didn't really know how it worked, so I set it to where I thought it was going to have no effect on the boost. And then I rolled into a bit of boost in second gear, and it just peaked to 14 PSI immediately. So, I pulled the car over, everything looked fine, and then I turned the boost controller all the way the other way, so I thought, now it's going to have no effect. And then I did another pull, and it peaked at 14 PSI again. I was still able to drive the car home, but of course the head gasket said no to 14 PSI. That's also about the maximum of what my ECU can read, so it may have gone out of the range of the map sensor. And then of course I'm not exactly sure what the ECU will be doing once that happens. Now I'm going with this head gasket, it is the most expensive one I could find. With, uh, Victor Rhines. I know you guys might recommend some other stuff, but this is the only thing I could find honestly. Also head studs. Don't be fooled by this box, these are not real ARPs. So I ordered these not knowing there was two sizes of these series head studs. So what happened was I got them, they were too long. The engine I have takes the shorter studs. So then knowing that I ordered a short set. But of course they sent me the wrong thing and they sent me another long set. So then I ordered another short set from a different seller. This is all from AliExpress by the way, not eBay or Amazon. Just because it was way way cheaper on that site and then the second seller sends me the wrong studs again so this took like 70 days to come in and then it was the wrong thing luckily before these came in i thought they were not going to come anymore i ordered from amazon the exact same thing as you can see the packaging is the same it's basically the same thing this is just from amazon and then of course they sent the correct stuff so honestly if you want to buy these uh, fake arp head studs they're about a third of the price of real stuff Buy them from Amazon or eBay, not any other weird website. Just go straight Amazon, eBay. I'll link it below. They are quite cheap and, you know, it is the right thing. For the newer engines, the EK D-Series engines, you need a 14.5mm stud. And for the older ones, as you can see, it's about 20 mm longer. So this is for the EG engines, the EG D-Series and the EFs. And the EK's got these ones. Apart from the D16 Z6, I think it also takes the long one, and the JDM D15P also takes a long stud. But the Y7s, Y8s, and Y9s take the short stud. Some of the Z models also take the short stud. Basically, if your engine came from an EK, it's probably going to take the short stud, unless it's a D16 Z6. I'm probably going to make this video reviewing these studs, see if they work. I'll go do a few pulls on the car, see if it blows them again, and then tell you guys whether these are good studs or not. Because if you're from the US, just buy LP studs. I mean, you're going to get them, deliver to your door for free in like two days. But other countries, it's not that easy. You have to pay shipping, you have to pay for import duties. The exchange rate from those countries to US actually kills you on it as well. So you end up paying more than what someone from the US would pay for them. So if you're from the US, just get LPs. If you are from somewhere else and you're trying to save a bit of money, I'll review these for you guys and tell you whether to buy them or not. And now we're going to time lapse pulling the head off and changing the head gasket.
Anyways, we have the cylinder head off. Everything looks okay over here. The pistons look fine. Side walls look fine. There's no scoring on the sleeves. So, overall happy with that. Now let's quickly look at everything else. So here's the head gasket we initially had on here, and that blue over here, you can clearly see it's blue on all four cylinders. Here's the one we pulled off now. Blue in exactly the same spot, but I don't know if you guys can see that, but literally that is, that's it. A little bit of seeping. You can see it blue, the head gasket here, but only on the center too. So only here and over there. This one actually, cylinder number one, nothing. Cylinder number four, also nothing. So you can see this one was still in, you know, infant stages of blowing the head gasket. Where this one had grenaded the head gasket. The situation, like I said, is a lot better than what it was. So what we are hoping now is this head gasket, LP head starts, and we won't have this problem anymore at all. Okay, so here's the head studs. It comes in a flimsy box like this. You get your washers and bolts. Then you get the studs. They do come in this oily bag. I did open all of it. So I'm going to install them now and see how they fit. Okay, so we have the head studs in, so as you guys can see this one is longer, this is one of the long studs from a D16A6, that's just because the head cast has the VTEC stuff over here, so this actually the cast in the cylinder head bolts on higher, so you do need this one. Now for some reason my block has a deeper set hole here, because the original head had a lower cast here for some odd reason, I don't know why, so this one sits a bit lower, so I'm going to put on the head, see if there's enough threads exposed to put the nut on here. If there isn't, what I'll do is I'll either back it out a bit out of the block and then put the nut on, or we'll go the same route as this and get a longer stud. But I'll have to see first with the head on how this fits. Other than that, everything's fine. Everything went in as it should. Everything is nice and clean. I'm going to just clean everything again. Clean rag, use carb cleaner, clean all the surfaces here. Then we put the dowel pins in here, put the gasket on and put the head on. Okay, so I have all the head studs in just to test them and as you can see this is how a normal one sits here's the one that sits on the VTEC tower you can see it actually the threads doesn't touch the block which means we won't be able to use this long stud unless I stack washers which I have enough washers to do that but I think actually a short stud will poke out enough here to actually just use a normal short stud and the same with this one so this one in the corner here sits deeper in the block let me try and show you that but as you guys can see, it pokes out enough to get the nut on there. So it looks like short studs are going to work all over. I'm going to take this one out and then I'm going to tighten down the middle too just to pull the uh, cylinder head onto where it should be. Hey guys, looks like we're going to get away with these studs. So I put the bolt on this one in the middle just to seat the head completely. And now you can see the threads, uh, they end right about where the head starts. However, luckily I have these quite thick washers. So, I mean, that will space the nut a bit up, as well as inside there's a cone. So you have about five millimeters of play here before this will actually bottom out to where there's no more threads. At the back here, 
uh, we are about four millimeters short so what I'm going to do is just back this stud out of the block by about let's say four millimeters and then just tighten the whole thing down again make sure the nut and the stud sit at the same height we might lose one or two threads in the block but I don't think that's an issue Okay, the head studs are all torqued down now. They do poke out quite far. But I think this is because these studs are probably for the D16. And as far as I know, the D16 is just a higher deck height block of a D15. So that's probably why you're getting this much poke on the studs. We do have this one at the back where we lost about, I would say, three millimeters of threads in the block. So I took it out about three millimeters just so it will sit flush with the stud. Now you can use the long stud. In my case, because of course the 15 block, I have to stack about three washers just to make sure that the nut doesn't bottom out on the stud. But I mean, other than that, everything's perfect. Even this weird one in, in this corner, that's fine. Now the torque settings is actually also a lot more. As you can see, the factory is 67 newtons at the end and I torqued 84 newtons. In foot pounds, it's 62. So in foot pounds, you would go 15, 30, 62. I use the Newton meters, 20, 40, 84, and obviously they recommend the 20, 49, 67. So a lot more talk on the fake ARPs. I didn't have assembly loop or ARP loop, whatever. I just used motor oil. Now these studs, of course, don't come with any instructions, assembly loop or anything. You just get the studs, washers, and uh, nuts. So I'm happy with this, everything talked down nicely. What I'm gonna do is put everything back together, abuse it a bit, and then I'll check back with you guys in a few days. And then still in this video, I'll give you guys a quick review of how they're holding up after a few pulls. Okay guys, so what's my honest opinion on these fake copy Amazon ARP studs? Well, first of all, are they worth it? I would say yes, they are worth it. Now the old head gasket in this car failed while the car was making about 115 horsepower. So, I mean, that's not a lot, but it could have been relating to the tune. After installing these, the car did make a lot more power and we didn't have the same issue at 115 horsepower. So yeah, definitely an improvement. Are they worth it? I would say yes. There's a video on YouTube, I'll link it below, where they test these studs. It is for the V8 LS, but I assume that the same principles will apply. Now, the stock studs could handle 150,000 PSI of force before they failed. These ones could hold 170,000 PSI. And then real ARP studs could hold between 200 and 220,000 PSI. So obviously, the ARP studs are much better and much stronger. And if you can afford it, you should definitely go that route. But these are definitely an improvement, even if it is just to make sure you don't strip the threads inside your block because obviously a stud is much safer. All the torque and wear happens here at the top instead of in the bottom of your block. Now I did retorque these a few times. At 84 Newtons, they were fine. Then I retorqued them to 90 and they were okay. And then I retorqued them to 95 and one of them actually stretched. I'll put a picture on the screen how it looks. But basically I was torquing them and then the torque wrench clicked and suddenly it unclicked. So basically once the stud stretched, it released the torque. I then did actually drive it with the stretch stud and it still held up. So yeah, these are an improvement. They are stronger. They do hold a lot more power. They are about $100 cheaper than ARP studs. So it basically depends on what you want to do. If you're looking for big power, then no, these are not going to do it. But if you're just looking for an upgrade or a safer stud to use, then these are definitely an option. If you're on a budget, then these are definitely a great option. I am going to continue using these and in the next video you guys will see the car on the dyno and obviously what happens to these. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, please like, comment, subscribe, I'll see you all in the next one.